Drupal Camp LA 2009. Woo! It's intro to Drupal. I'm your host, Doug Van, and the back of the house can hear me just fine. Front of the house is good. Alrighty. Alrighty. I did a couple uh, informal polls as people were coming in. I asked people, who knows the difference between a region and a block? I asked, who's got past the front page of a fresh Drupal install? And a couple had and a couple hadn't. And um, so it sounds like we can really start at the beginning. I do want to explain that I use Acquia Drupal. What is Acquia Drupal? Uh, Acquia Drupal is the exact same Drupal that anybody else has. Uh, with the addition of, it has many contributed modules. Uh, the first thing you'll do when you install Drupal is eventually, shortly after, if not immediately, is start adding a lot of contributed modules that are not included in core. Acquia Drupal has a, uh, an, a, a growing number of contributed modules that have been tested and tried and true and they're good to go and um, it's, it's the Acquia stamp of approval on these modules that they uh, will do the job and not conflict with each other. And if, if anything would change in the future, they jump on those situations and get them, get them fixed up. So, it's, um, so it's, it's, there's a maintenance you know, going on with that as well. So I just like it. I, you know, I install it once and I've got a ton of stuff. Uh, the subscription for Acquia is optional. There's uh, packages you can uh, subscribe to. They will monitor your uptime, your site, your performance, uh, the core. Um, you can call, you can either email for uh, help or call for help. Uh, there are subscription packages. Those are optional. But Acquia Drupal is free, just like Drupal is free. Free is in beer, free is in speech. It's what we do. So um, I'm using an Acquia Drupal install, which is what I do. So on the front page of any fresh Drupal install, what is Drupal? Drupal is a content management system and an application framework. Um, other, other systems, you know, let, let's talk about the other guys. Anybody use WordPress? Okay. Um, is WordPress a content management system? I'm going to say yes with a, with a question mark at the end. It is for if you're a blogger, it is. Yeah, it's an awesome, is, is, it, is, it, is it a better blog application than Drupal is? Yes. yes, without a question mark at the end. I built my first uh, WordPress site a few weeks ago for a missionary friend, and uh, I had a friend to help me, and I was really, really, really impressed, really impressed with it. And I know for a fact there are some things in WordPress that are, that are going to be available for us in Drupal 7. Uh, and there are things that Drupal's been doing forever that will be available in WordPress next iteration as well. So we're just feeding off each other. But uh, Word, um, WordPress is not really a content measurement system in some respects in that you don't really want to do like a a bunch of pages and a bunch of content and a bunch of, you know, show me all this kind of content sorted by dates and users. Um, WordPress really not made for that. They're, they're kind of forcing it in there and they're having some success. Joomla, any Joomla users? I came from Joomla to WordPress. Um, I'm sorry, to Drupal. From Joomla to Drupal. Um, and only recently played with WordPress. And um, Joomla is um, supposedly, you know, prettier icons, a little easier. And I think it's a li limited functionality um, as well, because I came from Joomla. But it is, it is a full-blown content management system. Big sites, big database applications, dynamic situations. Drupal is a content management system, but it's also an application framework. You can, you, know, you can dig into the code when you want to and without hacking core of Drupal. And you can do that with other things. But we have tons of, of uh, just a library of functions, api.drupal.org. Is a, is a place you go to look up all the functions and the arguments and the how, you know, I want, I, want to, I want to change this finite little thing and there's no radio box or check box or thing to make that happen. What you need to do is actually get in and write a custom function. Drupal, I think, is really suited for a coder. So Drupal's called a coder's content management system or a developer's content management system. That's a, that, that's a name we have to wear. You can get, I want to get you guys far out. Who, who does have a strong PHP knowledge in here? Oh, wow. Okay. Once you get past these basics, you're going to take off. I mean, you're going to jump out of the nest and fly. I'll get you past some weird hurdles that'll, you know, you, you know how to iterate through a loop, but you can't, you don't know what a block or a region is. That's an awkward position to be in. I was in that. Uh, what I'm giving you is what, I've, what was given to me. And uh, I sat in front of PhDs and module developers, and, 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 and I'm like, what? What's a node? <laughs> God help us all. Okay, um, how many topics do I have going? So yeah, application framework, uh, content management system, uh, free G GPL, I forget what that stands for. GPL version 2.0 is our license. Um, it's free. 
So here's the front page of a Drupal install. Uh, it will be. Is that? There it is. This says, Welcome to your Aqua Drupal site. Again, um, this just has some extra modules. It's just as free as everything else. Um, does anybody not know how to install a Drupal site? Okay. Yeah, there's tons of uh, screencasts. Uh, if you have a fairly decent ho host, web hosting, you can click a button and they'll just do it for you right there. They won't keep it upda updated as nicely and maybe not as easy to modify, but seriously, um, hook up with somebody at some point and, and help them help, uh, let them help you install Drupal for the first time. It says, to start, it says start at the beginning. Step one, start at the beginning. Visit the administration section for a task-based or module-based. What's a module? What's the difference between a module and a plugin and an extension? We don't have plugins, we don't have extensions, all we have is modules. Uh, other platforms do have plugins and extensions and widgets, thingies, whatchamadoogers, thingamabob. We, all we have are modules. When you install a module, what's it going to do? No telling. Is it going to look different? Are things going to change? There's no telling. Um, read, read, read up on the module to see what you just installed and what you should expect to happen. So it says we can go to the administration section for task-based or module-based overview. And what that simply means is, let's go, to the, let's go there. So here's by task and here's by module. So they haven't lied to us yet. L categories of content management, site building, site configuration, user management, and reports. And I may have a lot of things in here that you're not going to see on your fresh installs, because again, I have Acquia. I've tried to turn off some of the things that that wouldn't be in your install, but uh, if anything, if anything, I hope I encourage you guys to to use Acquia Drupal, and it's free. But um, so by module just shows me a list of all the modules. In this case, it'd be core modules and the contributed modules that I already have in here. In your case, it'd be only core. But um, so I want to change the front page. Let's let's just jump in and fr change the front page. What, what was their step two? Connect to the Acquia network. That wouldn't be appropriate for you. Uh, activate functionality. Yeah, ignore that. That's that's not what we're going to talk about. Um, so I'm going to hit this administer button down here again. And look at all that. Okay, that, that's the Drupal, that, that's, that is your site.com slash admin. I'm on a local host on my Mac. But that, that's whatever your site is.com slash admin. I like a, mod, a contributed module called the admin module, or admin menu module. Drupal.org slash project slash admin underscore menu. It gives me this. Here's my site building. And you can see site building down here too. Here's my site configuration, and it's right there as well, further down, so it's, it's all in one place. I can just mouse over and get through and do what I want to do. That's pretty cool. So the admin menu module makes things a lot easier. I'll, I'll go back and forth from using them both so that you can get a feel for that. But it should be pretty simple to you. Um, if I want to change the front page, how do I do it? Site configuration. At the very bottom, the second from the bottom is site information, right? That's also available from one click here, site administer, and then site configuration, and then a second click there. So you can make it in two clicks, or you can make it in one click with the admin menu module. Um, and here's the information. The name of the site, we saw that earlier. It appears right up here, doesn't it? So if I want to change the name of my site, I'm going to change it right there. Uh, the email address. When things get sent to me, they, you know, they get sent there. A slogan I'm not using. Mission I'm not using. A footer message. Copyright something. All materials owned by me. You can't have it. Nanny nanny boo boo. Put a message in there if you want. Anonymous users are called anonymous. If we, if we allow anonymous users, users to post comments or content, it'll, it'll, it'll say buy anonymous. You, know, you can change that. The default front page. This is how we change the front page. Who did, who did not know how to change the front page? Yeah, you got your money's worth right there. <laughs> now, node, what is a node? Who really doesn't know what a node is? Okay, a node is any kind of content, is most kinds of content. Um, an event, um, a story, a blog post, um, page. a page, a page, a story, a phone. Um, on the um, now, is, is a comment a node? If I if I publish something, I had a good time at LA, and someone comments, "Hey, I saw you there. Thanks for that awesome session. Everything makes sense to me now." Is that comment a node? No. Can it be? If you need it to be, sure. There's comment notify and O-D-I-F-Y. If you really need to treat that piece of content as a node, there's a module for that. 
Um, users are not nodes. Users are users. You can make a user a node with a content profile module because there are things that nodes can do that other things that aren't nodes can't do. Um, an image. So if I want to have a blog post and I want to put an image in there of um, you, know, you guys, um, is that image going to be a node? Nope, that image is a field in the node. Um, now I can make images nodes. I can do that elsewhere. But just so, not to confuse you too much, but most of your content on a site is a node. As you go through pages and go through pages, most of the pages you're looking at every time you navigate to a different page is a node. If you're, if you're, if you're looking at a list of, um, of the next two weeks of events for you know, your, your, uh, your club, your gaming club, is that list of events a node? No. no, it's a list of nodes. It's a list of nodes by title and date where title is linked to the actual full node of that node, the full view of that node. So good answer. So but when we have node down here, this means I want pages, I want my front page, because this is what I'm doing, default front page. The home page displays content from the relative URL. If you're not sure, just put node. If, if unsure, specify node. And when you put the word node, it takes all your content that's tagged as promote to front goes to the front page. Has anybody seen a, a little checkbox that says promote to front? If you haven't, let's, let's show you one. Um, I, 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 I could click create. I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going to use the old school menu. Who likes the admin menu? Who's used it? The, the drop down admin menu? Okay. Okay. I've sold it enough. So page and story is all I've got. whoop de doo Are you going to build a, a really dynamic website with pages and stories? No. Come to my CCK class at 5 or 5.30, and I'll show you how to make a lot more and cooler content than that. But I'm going to create a story. It's going to be called The Welcome Story. OK? And um, thanks for coming. And I'll use uh, TweetSpeak here, THNX and a 4 and a coming, and I'll put a period of thing. So, um, that's welcome. You know, this is going to be my welcome page. I don't want that welcome page that we have now. I want a new one. And um, publishing options. Okay, look at that. It's published. That means it's not just sitting in the database. It's actually uh, available for the front. It's available for view. And um, promote to front page. We, we discussed that a little earlier. So, if your front page, as we saw on site information, is Node, then anything you you click on there for promote to front, you're just going to create this giant, giant river of news, river of pages. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And it says, story welcome has been created. Saturday, today's date, there's the time, I'm the author of it, and there's, there's, there it is. Thanks for coming, there's the whole thing. And um, add new comment, so the comment module's been turned on already. I can turn that off if I wanted to. Who doesn't know how to turn off the comment module? Okay. We'll do that shortly. And I am just kind of jumping around, just giving you a, you know, the, I didn't want to do slides on this. We need to see what Drupal's doing, not pictures of what Drupal's doing. Hopefully, that's appreciable. Um, so I'm going to go back to my front page after I fight my mouse overs here. And look at this. I've got welcome, as we had, and then I've got this other welcome page. Well, I'm kind of halfway there to getting what I want my front page to be. So how can I get rid of this? Can anybody give me one idea? Unpublish that. So I'll click the title. I'll look at it. I'll go to the edit. And, and she says I should unpublish this. Let's head down here to unpublish. And I could do that. But then I also see this button down here, delete. And I just really don't think I'm ever going to need this. So I'm going to delete it. What happens if you unclick the promote to front page? Uh, that, there, let's do that too. Either, either one would have done it. Either one. Then it would just disappear from the front It page. would. So I'll do that. Either one of those. I could unpublish it, because if it's not published, it goes nowhere. I can stop promoting it to front, because if it's not promoted to front, there's no other way to get to it. And I'll go ahead and save this. So I could have deleted it, unpublished it, or not promoted it to front. And um, so that it, brings it, it brings it back to this. This is node slash one. And um, what do you think the other welcome page I created, what's that going to be called? Two. Node slash two. Yep. But it, it hides that from you. Um, actually, if I click the welcome button, now I have node slash two. So on my front page, uh, Drupal hides the, the real name of, that, of this content. It just, it's just a, a river of all these nodes that are going to be promoted to front. When I, when I look at the actual node itself, it's called node slash two. Um, 
Who's a big fan of, of a page called node slash two? Does that sound like a, is Google gonna index that and think that means something? No. Um, how would I change it? Has anybody ever changed, gotten rid of the nodes and used nice numbers or nice names? Yeah, we'll do that shortly. Um, so thanks for coming, it's kind of bland. And by the way, while we're here, I'm gonna go to that site configuration, site information. I'm gonna make that node slash two so that you know, no matter what happens, node slash two is the only front page node. And by the way, you can hit the enter key when you're in a field on a, on a form submit, as opposed to scrolling all the way down to find your save button. So if you're in a single text field, hit enter, it'll save the node for you. So now my front page is only this. What if I had 20 nodes that were all promoted to front page? Would they show up on the front page? No. Because no. it doesn't say node anymore. If, if it says node, just node with nothing, then everything gets dumped in the front page. But I've said I want node two and only node two. Go to, go to a Drupal site, slash node, any, any, any site you know of, and just do a slash node, and it will show you all the nodes they've used, because their front page is all tricked out with a view and themed and a lot of you know, static content, and it's, the front page is just what they want. But they still have some content tagged with front page. So go to, to recovery.gov slash node, go to lullabot.com slash node, and just look at what people have done <laughs> just for kicks. Um, there's a way to turn that off, but few people do it. So here's my front, here's my node. Um, now if, and when you click the Aquia logo, it takes you to that front page, which, which is intuitive. But what if I wanted the word home, like a home menu link for that node, for that page? How do I, how do I create a, a menu item for this front page? Very simple, this is Drupal core. Menu settings, so here's the title is welcome. The body is thanks for coming and I could have a bunch of stuff. I could put a WYSIWYG editor in there and put all kinds of colors and rows and tables and what have you. But here's menu settings. The menu title, home, I'm gonna go for all caps. You have a variety of options of menus. That could be another class to itself but primary links is right across the top of your page. So I'm gonna call it home. And the waiting, the wait. Um, light numbers float to the top, heavy numbers go to the bottom. So if I had a home, contact us, about us, services, foobar, and everything else, I could, I could adjust those by giving them different weights when I create them. So I'm gonna resave this node. Um, I'm gonna take off the promote to front because it is the front page node, whether that's clicked or not. Right? Because that's what I put on my site information. And here's a home link over here. You see that? And you can just fill that whole top of your screen up with links. Every time you create a node, a page or a story, in this case all we have is pages and stories. Or if you, want, if you, if you turn on the poll module and you create a poll, there's a menu settings options for that poll. Give it a name. Put it over there. And adjust the weight. Um, so that is that. I think the next thing I want to do is change the URL because node slash two is pretty boring so modules and if you're not using the admin module that I love so much up here which is like a really cool shortcut you're gonna go to administer you're gonna go to is that config yeah no no I gotta turn a module on first okay I gotta go to modules and we don't have uh, for the sake of those who came in late we don't have plugins extensions or widgets everything is a module um, and I've got a ton of them in here because I have Aquia Drupal which comes with a bunch of extra stuff. Um, but down here is Drupal Core. Core Optional. Core Optional is Path. And look through all those core modules. Path allows users to, re to rename URLs. It's required by Path Auto which right now is disabled it tells me. So Path. Um, so Path allows me to give a real name to a, to a, uh, to a node. And when, uh, I, th I, think, I think welcome would be a good name for that page. Or home, and call it what I want. So now I'm gonna go back to my front page. I'm gonna look at my, I'm gonna edit my node. And I've just created another option. URL path settings, see that? I turned on one module, it created, it hooked in to this, to every, every node that's ever gonna be created or edited. There's now a URL path settings. And I'm gonna call this, home and I'll, 
I'll keep it lowercase. I'll have to keep all my URLs lowercase. I just like that. I'm going to save it. And now, my address to this page is my local host, or whatever it would be, site.com slash home. That's a path. Um, on dougvan.com, with two ends, I have a blog. And um, when I create a blog, I don't have to go in and manually change the path each time. It automatically does uh, dougvan.com slash, it takes the year in four digits, slash the month in two digits, slash the date in two digits, slash the title of the, of the blog for that day. So that way it's always in, in um, proper sequence for, as time goes by. Um, that's the auto path. Very simple to do. Very simple to do. When, you have, when you're letting your users publish content and you want the URLs to be something besides Node 5, 10, 15, and 20, and you don't want them controlling the name of the, of the, of the URL, set up a path auto, and then you know, when they go to edit a node, they can't you know, set up permissions so they can't see the path to change it. It's just automatic behind the scenes. Everybody's happy. Um, so we, we created a node. We, we changed the front page. We created a node. Um, we gave it a URL that was not node slash number. Uh, we changed the front page. Uh, we unpublished some things. We published some things. Um, did some admin menu. Anything, I'm, I want to move to blocks and regions now, but is there anything about pages and nodes that needs to be clear? Where's yeah? Taxonomy. Taxonomy, okay. Taxonomy is a class, classification of things. If I had a lot of, um, <laughs> If I had a lot of stories going on, I might have personal and professional stories. I could set up a vocabulary called story type. And vocabulary is a bucket of, of terms for story types. And uh, then one taxonomy term, so the taxon tax taxonomy vocabulary is story types, I could call that. And then the term would be professional, personal, um, family, whatever. You know. Or uh, you know, my, my gaming persona, my model rocket persona, you know, whatever. So it, it doesn't classify things. So that's that's pages and nodes, and URLs and paths and publish. Anything else on pages? I'm heading. Yep. So when you named the, um, I guess the navigation. So you named it home, but isn't that really the same thing as the page? So if you set it up with automatically whatever the title is for the nav is the same as the URL. Auto title. Um, there's two, two angles of that. You can make a URL automatically become its title and make a title automatically become other things. Um, so, yeah. And, and that, that's a good point because when you, when you let your users create content, you, what you really want is some kind of a body or some kind of fields full of detail and you don't want to trouble them with paths and titles. You can set up automatic title assignments and automatic stuff. So that's, that's good. I'm heading for blocks. Administer. Uh, blocks. Okay, on this page, you can see a left region, a right region, a side, okay, I call it left sidebar, a right sidebar, and the middle content area, and the header, and here, okay, the content, the, the, the label for the content area is below the content area, then the label for footer is below the, the footer area. So here's your powered by Drupal symbol, right? Which, sure enough, powered by Drupal is a this is right here, right? It says it's in the footer. We see that? If I put it in the header, where's it going to go? If I put it in none, where's it going to go? Off in space. So very simple. This, you know, look at look at look at any Drupal site when you see one, or any any site of any content management system, and just kind of graph it out in your mind. There's the header. There's the sidebar. There's this, and there's, there's it's just mapping out blocks. Um, and if you're into CSS, this is a huge div for left, uh, a div with an ID for right. A div for the header, a div for the middle, and tons of nested divs all over the place. Um, I, I want a block on the right that that uh, says um, Drupal Camp's coming up in a week. Maybe we're this is a week ago, right? So I'm going to add a block. The block description um, coming soon. A brief description of your block used on the block overview page. That's what it says. The block title. Um, be there. The block body, blah 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 blah. You know, you, you know, it's coming up. Don't forget it. Last year was a blast. If you missed it, don't be an idiot. Come, come this time. Um, 
And then the, and we're, we're logged in as user one admin. We're the god user. So there's all these options of, you know, can some users make some blocks not appear? You know, do you allow your users, do, do you allow your users to customize their view? I ignore that. Show block for specific roles. Uh, if, I if I leave nothing clicked, this block I'm creating, this little announcement block about the event next week, this block will be visible to anonymous and authenticated. And that's the two broadest users you have. Either they are logged in or they're not. Now, once they are logged in, you can break it down further to uh, publishers, admins, supervisors, copywriters, content editors. You can do it, break it down all day long. But at the very f beginning, you just got two. Either they're logged in or they're not. I'm going to leave that empty. If this was an announcement about, you know, these are the, ben the benefits of joining my site. Well, I would, I would click the anonymous user because only anonymous users haven't joined my site. So you can control that. Pages it appears on. Um, if I put a, a, an address in here, a path, then this block will only appear on that page. What if I do, I'm in the wrong place. What if I do this? On, on which pages of my site will this block appear if I do that? Okay. Okay. Only on the home page, because half an hour, uh, 15 minutes ago, we created node two to be the home page, only node two. Um, and if I do this, um, and, and my front page is, let's say it's all tricked out, it's very special, very unique, and um, I would um, click this. Show on every page except this one. Because I don't want that, that, you know, that little block of content is going to throw off my layout. I don't want it on the front page. I would click that, okay? But, um, so I, I can just take that, that edit out. So show on every page except the following. The following is blank. It'll be on every page. So let's save it. And um, is, it, is it published? Is it there? Mm -hmm. I don't see it. It's down here in the disabled. When you create a new block, it's, it's by default disabled. So now I can come down here and take it over to the, to the right sidebar. The changes, you just, the changes uh, to these blocks will not be saved until the Save Blocks button is clicked, which is right there. I'm going to save it. Be there, and then unpronounceable strings of characters. Um, so that, there's your announcement. Um, I decided, you know what, it's probably better off on the left sidebar because I've got too much going on on the right. I come down to the coming soon, and I drag it up to the left, and I let go. And I put it right in the middle, right where I wanted it. And come to think of it, that user login would really be better off down here at the right sidebar anyhow. So then I'll save this. So my unpronounceable string is over here, and my user is over here. But I'm logged in, so the user block doesn't do a whole heck of a lot when you're logged in. Fair enough. Blocks are in regions. Regions are left, right, top, middle, center. You can have your own themes that have like kind of a content left and a content right. Um, all manner of flexibility is available to you with blocks and regions. Um, let's take a look briefly at some of the blocks that are available. The primary links. It says that they're disabled right now, right? But didn't we see some primary links a little while ago? What happens if I send these primary links to the header? Aren't they already there, though? All right? Let's do it. Who has an idea of what's going to happen? There'll be two of them. Okay. Here's, uh, here's home, and there's some. Look at that one. One's way up there. That's kind of unattractive. Look at that. I've got two of them. Well, what if I actually want that one up there? And I'm going to change the name. That, that title of primary links is gaudy. I can do that on the previous page. In fact, I should probably do it now. Um, so here it is on the, uh, on the header. Primary links, I'm going to configure that. The block title. Override the title. Um, use none to display no title. How about that? Okay. Do you need a title for your primary links? I mean, they see links, and they're kind of up there in the upper left. That seems kind of primary to me. I don't need a sign. So now I have two homes. Bless you. I have two homes, um, which in this economy is not a good thing. Um, well, we're going to get rid of one. And this is awesome. This is flowing perfectly. Um, my theme, okay, this is the block, this is the admin build block interface, okay? You can get there from clicking through the admin stuff, or you can use my cheat sheet, of, you know, my cheat method of using the admin menu module. And if you missed that in the beginning, the admin menu, admin menu module is giving us the fun stuff up here. The same destinations, just prettier path. 
Um, so my blocks module is giving me, and that's, that's block modules in core, and it's always on. My blocks module gives me all this block interface. Um, so something else is providing this other home link over here. It's my theme. The default theme for uh, a Drupal install is Garland. The default theme of an Acquia Drupal install, which is also free, um, is uh, Acquia Blue, I think. Acquia Marine, Acquia Marine. Um, oh, maybe it was Garland then. So I'm going to go to my Garland and I'm going to configure it. Who remembers the things we saw on that site information page? Well, at the very bottom, the home page, home page is now node slash two. There was slogan, site name, mission. Um, we could change the name of anonymous. Uh, there was a there was a footer text, wasn't there? I don't remember the header. Oh, I can change colors. Look at that color wheel. I don't know colors. I know code. Keep me away from colorful things, man. I'm, I'm a mess. Um, yeah. Okay, so here, look at this. Toggle display. So for this me for this theme, not all themes expose this functionality, but we, we we've, we've changed the front page of our site. Um, we've made uh, we've given it a path where there wasn't one. We installed we uh, enabled the path module, um, and which exposed a whole new field every time we added content. We know how to unpublish content and how to make things promote to the front. Um, we've we've created a block and moved it around. We've uh, taken the title away from a block. We've doubled up our menus. We've done a lot. But look at all this toggle display. What do I need to do to stop me from having two primary links on this site? Uncheck the primary links. So the, the theme, the, by default, the theme gives you some things on your site. Otherwise, you, your fresh install is going to look like nothing. That won't work. Um, and for that matter, you know the, the logo they provided. You know, maybe I want to put my own static logo in, or or the site name. You know, maybe once I put my own logo in, my logo has my name in it, and, I, and I'm and I'm going to turn off the site name. Mission statement. It's blank right now, anyhow. So why even have it in there? The shortcut icon is by default Drupal. Um, I can change that. Look down here. Path to custom logo. I'm in the theme configuration for the Garland theme right now. If you're on a different theme, um, Slate is my favorite. Doug, Dougvan.com is on a Slate theme. But you can change the logo here. The default is the uh, Aqua Drupal. Um, the shortcut icon is down here. Um, so you can change that. You know, everybody knows what the short, shortcut icon is. Uh, is it, which is the same as Favicon, right? I hope it is. I've always thought it was. So if, if there's a path to an internal address, or you can upload one right now. So I'm going to save this. I took out the mission statement, which I wasn't even using. I took out um, that second uh, primary links. So now all I have on my front page, and I'll go to the, the real front page, is um, that link that I created for the block. Um, now it's above the it's above the image here, which is kind of kind of wonky. Do you think I could move it? No. No. The um, this the logo here is being provided by the by the theme, and this is being provided. This link is being provided by the block, and I can't get above that. So um, maybe I prefer using the uh, themes version of the primary links. I don't know. So we've um, turned some things on and off in the theme, created a page, published pages. Um, I have some ideas of where to go, but before I forget to ask, I want to ask now, who has some specific questions? Yeah? Would you want to go over the taxonomy? Like yeah, a real quick taxonomy. Is that, is that cool? OK. Um, and I'll do it the old school way, using the standard menu. Um, is it is the taxonomy turned on? Was it? Oh, there it is. Thank you. I was used to mousing over that I go back to this and I'm like, are you ever in? Okay. Um, that those two paragraphs are valuable. They they really do break it down for you. There are no vocabularies available at this time. So obviously the only thing we can do right now is add a vocabulary. A taxonomy vocabulary is a big bucket of terms, just like any vocabulary would be. Um, um, ter, uh, post, post type, and, and and the user never sees this name. Um, so this is this is for my personal reference. Description, 
um, scope of content. So as I'm posting content, some of it's professional, personal, or business related, or you know, my, my trip to Disney World with the family, I don't want that going to Drupal Planet being you know aggregated out to that. Um, and uh, help text, you know, it may give somebody some, you know, you know, please use short terms or you know, keep everything lowercase, you know. Um, some instructions because we're building an interface for people to use to tag content. If you're the only person using your site, then that help text is you know you. But if you're doing this for other people, give them instructions. Content types. So what kinds of content does this apply to? Let's stick with stories for now. Let's just go with page. So this vocabulary of post post type is only available for pages. Um, now here are the options. Tags. Terms are created by users when submitting posts by typing a comma separated list. So this is not a drop down. It's not personal, family, business, foobar, or whatever. They can type in whatever they want. Um, multiple select, which is a, a drop down of, uh, of one or more tags. And then required, and then optional is required. So uh, we'll go with required, we'll go with uh, tags. It's simple, simpler that way. And uh, I, can, I can weight these, weight, weight the vocabularies. That's beyond the scope of today. So now I have a vocabulary. I can edit the vocabulary and change the name of it, or I can add some more help text to it because my users are getting very confused. I can go edit my vocabulary and add some better help text. I can list my terms, which I happen to know there are no terms because I just created this bucket. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to add terms. Um, interestingly enough, um, um, just me. So personal is just me. Advanced options. Uh, you can hierarchy your terms. Um, you know, in, in business, maybe I have. Um, maybe I'm still doing three different content management systems, but I'm not. Um, under business, I could I could have you know one CMS, a second CMS, and third CMS. So I can create a hierarchy of these things. Um, related terms. Uh, if people are constantly misspelling something, make an IE version and an E after I version. You know, uh, or, or, or fast, rapid, and quick are going to be terms for some reason. You can make those synonymous so that when one person says quick, it also is the same as the other person using other terms. So when you go to make a list of all the content that says tagged with fast, it actually pulls up all the other ones as well. Make sense? Um, so I didn't really need, I didn't need to use those advanced options, but I showed you anyhow. Um, so now I have one term in here. It says create a new term personal. And um, so I'll go back to my list, and here it is, personal. So um, that is that. Now that, that's, that's creating terms myself like that is more beneficial when I have a drop-down select that the user can choose. Um, if it's an empty text field, then they're just going to create their own anyhow. So, so my lesson was, was more informative than practical, my use case was. Uh, and that's taxonomy. And, when you, and then I'm, so now I'm going to go back to my post, which awkwardly enough is still just my front page post. I'm going to edit this, and I should see some new op, 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 no, that's a, that's a story. Okay, I made, I made that vocabulary apply to pages. So I'm going to go to create content, page, and uh, look at that. So title and body, every, every, every node has that. Now I have post type, and it's required. It says a common separated list of terms describing this content. Example, funny, bungee, jumping, company, etc. Okay? So I can tag all my page posts with taxonomy. Now, if, I believe so. I think if I put something in there, it'll override that. That would make sense to me. Um, let's, hope, let's hope so. Um, blah. Yes, and if you, if you, if you do uh, rain... Uh, Rain Bria is doing the, the views demystified session. I don't know if it's later today or tomorrow. Uh, she might say that, um, she might go into the details that you can make a view. Show me link, show me the title as a link to its post of all the pages that have a taxonomy term of personal. And so here's my personal, here's my personal posts. Here's my family post. So that's when taxonomy comes in handy. So yeah, thanks for asking for taxonomy. That was quick and painless. Um, this is your class, not mine. Any blue? So to follow up, the uh, multiple select create both taxonomy. Say again? Uh, the multiple select option.
option mm -hmm. in the taxonomy for the stomach when you're creating a post with that, create a closed set. Mm -hmm. it, it would um, if you have a short number, it would just make a, a, a four long, a four tall, a four character tall box, mm -hmm. and you can just shift, you can shift click them. And or so there would be no open tax option. Right. Exactly. Exactly. It's, it's one of those. Those are considered widgets. A widget of a, a blank text field versus a select widget. And um, that's how that goes. Who's got some questions? We've got 15 minutes. I can do what I want to do, or I can answer another really good question that everybody also has, but they're afraid to ask. Over here. So, um, I, I just really need to be a user, and I have an old, like, Drupal 5 site, and every, I, I don't, everything I create just turns out to be a blog post. How do I create, I mean, I guess that's the way it was set up, how do I create a new page that doesn't just look like a blog post? By default, every content type in Drupal, a page and a story, has a, to has a uh, title and a body. Um, if you go to um, uh, administer, and this is true in Drupal 5, everything I've done so far is 5 and 6 compatible. I can't think of anything that, that, that would be otherwise. Um, content. Content types. N pages and stories, right? Um, if, you, if, you, if you add content types, without having any extra modules on, then, um, so, this one's called this, and th and that, and the other. So I'm creating a new kind of content. It's not going to be a page, not a story, not a blog, not a poll, and this is all that it is. By default, um, the title field is called title, the body is called body. Um, I can change the name of the body field and call it description. And I can change the name of the title field and call it name. So this is, this is going to be something about somebody, right? So it's still a title and a body, but we're calling the title name and we're calling the body description. If I leave that, that whole thing out, it tells me there will be no body. All it is is a title. How boring is that? Minimum number of words. Explanation of submission guidelines. Please submit your recommendation for the honorary award. You know, um, Workflow. Uh, by default, when, when we create this content, it will be published and it will be promoted. Promote. We, we got to get that out of core. That should not be automatically checked. Uh, co if your comment module is on, the question becomes, is this the kind of content that someone can comment on you know, by default, or do you want to select that at the time you create the node? Blah, blah, blah. Very simple. So I'm going to save this. Now, I have a list of page, story, and I've created a new kind of content. The nice lady points out that this is just like every other piece of content. Title and a body. Now I got fancy with it. My title is now called Name. And my body's called. But it really is a title and a body, isn't it? So have I, I haven't really razzle dazzled you by changing this much, have I? Which is why she's gonna come to five or five thirty, I forget when, to my CCK demystified session where I show you how to actually make content look like something besides a blog post. So a blog is a title and a body, a page is a title and a body. That gets old. That gets old. Yeah. So, excellent question. Excellent question. Um, and on that note, please go to the Views Demystified. CCK is Content Construction Kit, and it adds fields to your content. Views Demystified by Ray, Rain, Rain Bria, one of the Drupal chicks, is um, you know how to parse that down. Like I've said so many times, show me the last seven posts by this user of taxonomy such and such that has more than five comments and has a five star rating better than three and a half. You just keep on drilling it down, you know, whatever you want to do with views, you can do it. Uh, 10 minutes, oh, in the back. How would you create a front page that, uh, I guess, transcends the blocks and just has, you know, say one big J head? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a debate as to whether we're hacking at this point I say no, and I think most good people say no. Um, the page.tpl.php, this is theming 101 now. Page.tpl.php is a, is a page that tells Drupal how to theme any page. Page-front.tpl.php themes only the front page. And it's very common that you want a very, very, very different layout for your front page. So if you want to, go to you know, copy your page.tpl.php, make a copy of it, and rename it page-front. 
Go in there, throw all the HTML static you want, just break all the rules. You know, don't put any DB queries or database calls in it. That's that's really not good. But you can just put all kind of. You know, don't use the logo upload interface and all that stuff. Just make take a static page, copy over it almost. But you still have, and then so the blocks are irrelevant and the regions are irrelevant if you wanted to do that. Okay, what if you needed multiple pages? Then you can you know um pay uh, page dash. Like if I had a welcome page and a, and a contact us page and our offices page, page-offices.tpl.php. But at, at some point, you really want to get some GUI control back in because this is a content management system. But uh, de determine what needs to be dynamic and what doesn't need to be. And you can also throw HTML into the body of a page. This is, this is a great question. My front page is boring. Who's with me on the boring front page? Okay. And I can, I can put HTML in here, but it's going to get filtered out until... I go down here to my input format, full HTML, boom. So now, if you've got, if you've FTP'd up some images to a little, you know, uh, site.com slash sites slash de default slash files slash images, which is really the, 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 the generic place where we put all of our images, then you start linking them in here, start referencing them in this page. And now you can just get all tricked out. And you can tell your um, blocks to not render on the front page. Show, you know, so on every single one of your blocks, configure them to show on all pages except put front, save, next one. Let's keep on going. All your blocks are gone. Uh, the user login is in the user block. Users will have to go to site.com slash user to log into your site because you have no user block, which is fine. You know, make them go somewhere else. You don't need some gaudy little login block. Um, any more questions? We're on a roll. People asking good stuff. How about XML? XML? Yeah. What would you want to do with XML? I have an XML slide. Can I this? XHTML? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, throw it in there. I mean, obviously, uh, the HTML tags will be rendered as HTML. If your, if your XML tags have some you know, meaning in another scope, they'll just be ignored. But XHTML is fine. We've uh, changed the front page. We've inspired one guy to totally hack his front page. Not really hack it, but just mod it. Mod it up one side down the other. We've changed the name of pages and changed the name of URLs. Uh, we've moved blocks around. We've gotten rid of all the blocks on, on one person's front page. Um, we've added taxonomy vocabularies and terms inside the buckets. Um, and we've got seven minutes. Any questions? I'll find something to ramble. There we go. Say your users aren't like good with HTML and they want like a web page where you get a URL. Yeah. They want to be able to upload a picture in a sure. way. Yeah, click here to browse your, your local directory. Uh, who's used a WYSIWYG editor in Drupal? What have you used? I, I heard FCK? Tiny MC. Tiny MC, yeah. Um, I think the winner really these days is FCK editor. And there are two ways to do that. You can use the FCK editor module, or you can use the WYSIWYG API module and then follow the instructions. And I'll leave that up to you. Um, a lot of hard work went into the WYSIWYG API module to, to improve functionality and performance. So you might go that route, and there's some good screencasts on that. Um, but it gives you everything you want. You can, you can control the buttons. For this kind of users, they only have bold, italic, and link. These kind of users, they have five rows of daunting you know, space shuttle cockpit controls. So it's very, very customizable. So that's your WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. And you can put, you can, you can bring an image in, in line. That image is not a node. You can't vote on that image. Five star, you can't show a list of them. Show me a list of all the images uploaded by users. Eh. There has to be a field in the image field. And I'll show that off in the CCK class at five o'clock. I tried to create a front page that had, you know, full text all the way down, and it always insists on cutting it and saying, "Press here for more." Press here for more. I teaser. Get rid of that. Okay, teaser versus full view. Awesome. Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up. Um, a teaser automatically truncates a, a body of content at an awkward place that you don't want it to do it. Um, we, when you create a, a, a node with a bunch of content, 
Uh, here's my body. Uh, split summary at cursor, okay? Um, if I actually, so I'll go, in, I'll, I'll go in between the for and the coming, and I'll split my content, okay? So now I have two fields. Now you didn't have this pie, did you? You weren't, put the full, you put the full thing in there? Yeah. Okay. Well, if I wanted to get a breakup like that, and I, want, and I wanted the breakup to be at a very appropriate place, which that's obviously not, I'm gonna, I'm gonna join him back up. So it's not that he just configured this incorrectly. He has a, you have, are you using CCK module as well? No. No? Isn't there a display setting for, um, for, for, so content types, story, yeah. Oh, post settings. Yeah. Train the trainer. Um, the number of, okay, here we go. This is very important. I should have brought this up way long ago. Uh, the post settings area, which is in administer, content management, post settings. Um, number of posts in the main page. So if you're doing that promote to front page thing, if you had 20 posts that were promoted to the front page, you wouldn't want a long, you know, a little bit of scroll bar. This says, only give me 10 on the front page, and then it paginates them. There'll be a next. If you make it five, you'll have four pages of five if you have to make it print it. Length of trimmed posts, my man. Length of trimmed posts is 600 characters. Um, you can make it unlimited, and you're going to get all your content on one page. How about that? For everything. For everything. I just want my front page to have it. Just the front page? Yeah. Well, do you have other pages with more than 600 characters? Possibly. Yeah. Um, you, can use, you, can, you can create views of them as opposed to node renders of them, and you can trim them off at a specified point. So it's a little bit of a workaround, but you should have uh, some degree of control over this as opposed to a global setting. You know, go to the issue, go, to, go, uh, go somewhere, write your congressman. I don't know, I can't think of anybody right now. But uh, when you're in front of someone much more important than me, complain about that. God, that's, that's a good point. So I didn't know the answer to that, but I found it. Okay, you can find your answers even when Doug Van is not around. Just click around, you'll find something. Four minutes. We're solving people's problems. We're getting their front pages bigger and getting rid of their blocks. I'm sorry. So, why, what you were explaining to him, does that mean that every post has to be roughly the same number of characters regardless of what, where it appears in the site? No. There's no, there's no uh, restriction imposed in that re regard. This just says that there's a, there's a default truncate at a certain site. If, if you want it, there's a default truncate that says, now do you want more? So when, because the idea about Drupal is this is community publishing. It's not just us who are all smart and witty and we do things the right way. It's those stupid users that we have on our site that come in and post these, you know, 1,000 character texts. And so we just make it a rule. Okay, you know, I can't, I'm not doing that. I'm going to cut everybody off at 400 characters. So um, if you want to use that option or not. And what we discovered is, and I never knew this till today, it defaults at 600. And that was, that was not good for one user, so we just find out how to change it. But, but I guess, because you know, I understand how to do that in WordPress, it's, it's, so it's just you just hit it and it, mm -hmm. you know, do it at will for, for blog posts in WordPress. That's like so intuitive. On this one, I thought I understood you to say that whatever it is, it's like that for every type of... Um, type th of so, yeah, so by taking this unlimited, they can, they can make it as long as they want and it'll never get truncated. But when I was on my page edit for, um, for the front page, I had the option at that point of splitting its summary. So if I had a bunch of, uh, a bunch of stuff going on, I could say at some point, well, the gist of it's kind of up there at the top. So I'm going to kind of go right about here, I'm going to split that. So when this, when this node goes to be viewed, it's going to default to just that earlier portion and then they can get in deeper. So this, I'm giving the control to the user as opposed to him, you know. But but the, but if I had that 600 still set up, then it would it would default to that if 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 a person needed to. They wouldn't be able to override it by separating it here. This uh, this is king. Okay. Yeah, I mean it won't it won't go beyond 600. If they drop down to the 700th character and try to put a, a summary break, it's going to default back to the um, 600 that we imposed. So the 600 is only applied to the uh, summary. The what? If I put a second character limit, that only applies to the summary. Yes. So I can have a post one and second uh, characters. Exactly. 
that's how I would interpret that. I'd be curious if it didn't. That's how I would design it. Yeah. We're one minute over, but I'll answer a question or two. Are we good? All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh yeah, and if you want uh, some personal assistance, buy me dinner and I'll teach you anything you want in the room. <laughs> trying to get my Camtasia to come up so I can turn it off. <laughs> oh, there it is.